The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us for today's webinar. My name is Paul Schumann and I'm the product line manager here at Technical Toolboxes. Before we begin, we have one housekeeping item. The slide presentation will be made available to download during the Q&A session of the webinar by utilizing the handout feature in the GoToMeeting control panel. The topic for today is HDD stress analysis for pipeline engineers, PE pipe versus steel. We receive industry feedback that PE pipe is in growing in importance. Our SME today is David Willoughby, and he'll talk about the commonalities of all drill designs. Next slide, please. As always, our goal is to provide thought leadership to support engineers and cultivate your professional development, which ultimately contributes to your personal and company success. Our speaker will review some of the issues, HDD versus steel, and the features in common and the differences due to the material choice in the application. Additionally, we'll briefly tell you about HDD tools from technical toolboxes, upcoming training events, and knowledge man management solutions we provide to help you advance your career. We design our live webinars for your participation. We invite you to join in, take part in a couple brief interactive polls and post your questions in the chat box throughout the webinar, and then invite you to stay for the Q&A session to hear the responses and discussion with Mr. Willoughby. So to get started, we'd like to begin with a uh, quick poll. So just to move on from the poll, it looks like um, a live demonstration and a walkthrough uh, was the number one response, followed by webinar training opportunities uh, for those that participated. Next slide, please. Today, our subject matter expert is Mr. Willoughby, who has more than 40 years of experience in engineering, pipeline design, corrosion control, and management in the petroleum and utilities industries. His HDD experience includes gas transmission and distribution systems, petroleum facilities, and water and sewer pipelines. Mr. Willoughby has been responsible for the design, permitting, inspection, and construction administration of numerous HDD pipeline projects. He is a highly esteemed professional development instructor and is the author of several articles and two published books by McGraw-Hill, as shown above. Next slide, please. I'll now turn it over to Mr. Willoughby, who will go through the um, technical aspects of our presentation today. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, glad to have you join us for the uh, presentation. <clears throat> we had a, a webinar not too long ago where we talked about steel pipe, and we talked about stress analysis and pull loads and things that dealt with steel pipe. Today, we're going to look at, you know, uh, what we call steel versus PE. We're going to focus a little bit you know, on uh, mainly on the, the plastic pipe, the polyethylene, and, and how we have to uh, take into consideration the material when we're designing our drills. Now, <clears throat> a drilling project can be a major event. If you look at like the picture there on the right, it can be a, a major water crossing, major land crossing, highways, things of that nature. And, and you know what makes a drill major it pretty much is usually the complexity of the drill. It could be a complexity caused by length, caused by diameter, caused by the kind of soil conditions we're in. And a lot of times it's caused by the surface conditions as well. But uh, our project can be anything from, from a very significant event to, to a, a, a relatively minor crossing, such as you know small streams, highways, and things of that nature. And when we look at designing a drill, regardless of, of what kind of material we're using, 
our design pretty much includes coming up with a crossing path that negotiates all the obstacles that we might be trying to get across while staying within our right of way, easement restrictions and things of that nature. So that, that's kind of the steps we go through on our design. Now, a lot of time people will approach their project and, and, and approach their design without paying proper consideration to the kind of material that they're going to use for that product pipe and how that material can have an impact on the HD design. And we're going to, that's what we're going to discuss mainly today, especially on the polyethylene uh, side of it. So to be a, a, an HD designer, to be effective in your design, you have to have an understanding of the product pipe material and how that material can impact the bore path design. Now we have steel pipe we use for HDD, we have uh, polyethylene, we have uh, 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 PVC, uh, ductile iron, have a whole combination of different pipes we can use. So regardless of which one you're using, you have to make sure that you understand how that material can impact your design. Again, today we're gonna to focus on steel versus the uh, polyethylene. <clears throat> now, regardless of, of the material we're using, when we when we install a pipe by directional drilling, that pipe is going to be subject to, to tension, bending, and external pressure loads uh, as it's pulled you know, through that reamed hole. And the tension is is what's required to pull that pipe through the hole, and that that comes from the frictional drag between the pipe and, and, and the. the we, we call that a lot of times the frictional drags between the pipe and, and the, the soil. Or, uh, if you look at it that way, the fluid drag is the drag that's uh, pulling the pipe through that mud, through that drilling mud. And of course, we have the effective way of that pipe uh, as it's being pulled through the different elevation changes within that borehole. So all of those factors there uh, uh, add to that tension required to pull that product pipe uh, through that hole. Another stress we have to look at regards to our product pipe is the bending stress. Uh, for HDD, we'll, we'll have at least one bend, if not more, uh, in that profile. And that bending stress uh, adds to, to uh, stress and adds to that tensile load as well. And of course, we have the external hoop stress uh, from the external loads acting on the pipe. It could be the drilling slurry in the hole. It could be the soil if, if you have to lose your hole in certain areas. In certain cases, it could be a, a live load, you know, and, and things of that nature. We'll look at those uh, stresses as well. <clears throat> now, the, the ability of, of our different product pipe materials to handle those insulation loads and stresses, again, can have a big impact on our, our, our profile. When, when, we, when we design our profile, negotiating those obstacles and just trying to stay within those easement points and right of ways that we might ha ha have to work with, okay? So again, it can have a pretty big impact on, on our bore path design. Give you a couple of things we have to look at. For example, steel pipe. Now, steel pipe can withstand high tensile loads and very high external hoop lo uh, stress loads. But still don't, don't, as I say, don't like the bending stress very well. You know, normally when we have a problem with stressing on steel pipe, it comes from, from bending stresses. Polyethylene is just the opposite. Uh, uh, Polyethylene will take a lot of bending stress and, and not cause any problem, but it won't handle as much tensile or external hoop loads as steel pipe will. So, so you know, and a lot of time when we're doing a drill, our, our pipe material is specified for that project. In fact, most projects you're going to design, somebody's going to tell you what your product pipe's going to be. It's going to be steel, polyethylene, duct line, whatever it might be. So most time the design does not have a choice on, on, on what kind of material. So when he designs that profile, he's got to make sure that he's making allowances for the material that he has to use, okay? Now, th there are some projects that I've been on that where the designer does have a choice. Th those are rare, but they do happen on occasion. And of course, in that case, you, you want to make sure that you pick the product pipe material that's going to be best suited for that, that, that crossing th that you're designing. Now, what you got to do is make sure that, that we, we either when you choose material or, or it's chosen for you, we got to make sure that our bore path design considers how that material is going to be impacted by that crossing uh, of that design that you have. I'll give you a couple examples here. Uh, polyethylene, for example, I told you it, it can handle a lot more bending stress than steel. So if I'm doing a drill where I'm going to have, uh, if I'm using polyethylene pipe, then I can get a lot more aggressive with my steering if I have to. If, if, now, a lot of things uh, impact my ability to do aggressive steering. The soil's got to support it. The tooling's got to support it. 
but still, if I can do aggressive steering, then that polyethylene pipe can handle some a, a lot tighter bend radius and, and, and that type than a steel pipe could. Okay, uh, a steel pipe would be just the opposite. You know, if, if I'm, I'm I'm going to have a steel product pipe, then I'm going to stay away from those real tight bends uh, uh, and those real tight radiuses because that's going to you know again cause me higher stress loads on my pipe. Plastic pipe, uh, uh, you know, it, as the drill gets longer, that's going to add tensile load. You know, it, as the pipe gets heavier, that's going to add tensile load. So anything that's going to add a tensile load, again, I, I'm going to have to be careful with that with my plastic pipe, whereas uh, I don't worry about that as, as much with steel. That's just, and there's several things we look at, but that's just the key things on, on how you have to look at the pipe material and how, and how your drill is going to affect that, that pipe material. So if you've got a, a, a 6,000 foot crossing, for example, and, and, and you were wanting to go with a polyethylene pipe, now, now I'm not gonna say you can't, but we've done some pretty long drills of polyethylene, but, but everything else you would do in that design to keep those tensile loads down, keep them low, would be paramount to you. Things like buoyancy control and, and, and mud weight and things of that nature would be very important for a very long uh, plastic pipe Whereas for a steel pipe, it wouldn't be, be quite, quite as critical, okay? So again, you know, uh, uh, those installation stresses are, are key that we have to look for in, in our HD design. And again, and each pipe's going to behave, behave with those stresses a little bit different. So uh, those installation those stresses are key. And when you're designing that borehole, remember, when you design that borehole, that that is going to have a huge impact on the type of stress and how high those stress levels are that, that product pipe is going to stick. Quite often during a drill a, a project, your product pipe, regardless of what material it is, is going to see the, the, the high stresses it'll ever see is during the pullback of that HTD. And we got to make sure that we don't you know, you know, cause any damage to it uh, at that time. So a lot of time those insulation stresses can dictate the, those material properties of, of a product pipe. <clears throat> now remember, all our design drill pads, regardless of your product pipe material, they're made up of a series of straight lines. We call those tangents. Uh, we have curves. Uh, typically, our curves are either going to be sag bends, over bends, side bends. Uh, sometimes we'll even do compound bends. So uh, our, our path is made up of that. And the location of it is to kind of define by, by those lines and our, our entry and exit points on the ground and our angles, our rays of curvature, and, and our points of curvature and, and tendency. Now, all those go in to, to, to de defining that drill profile. And again, all drill, uh, every drill profile, based on those angles you use, based on the radius you use, things of that nature, will have a, have a huge impact on, on what kind of stresses the pipe's going to see and how high those stresses are going to get. Now, normally, we determine the entry and exit pits based on our ground conditions and, and where we need to set up. You know, most of the time we kind of get dictated uh, for us by the right of way or by what's available. And, and so we'll, we'll kind of get those, those entry and exit pits uh, points defined. Once we define those points, then we have to look at the obstacles that we're going to cross. You notice I, I used the, the word obstacles. Most of the time we have more than one obstacle we're crossing. So we have to look at each one of those obstacles and we got to look at the depths we've got to achieve to negotiate those obstacles. Okay, and of course, any changes of directions in any plane I mentioned above, you know, it could be uh, left, right, up or down or any plane we're going in, whatever we got to change to negotiate those obstacles. All that is a major part of that design process. And, and when we talk about developing a bore profile, all that goes in developing that profile. And, and when we design a drill, that's where the work goes into really is going out, coming up with uh, identifying all those obstacles identifying your surface areas and coming up with a profile that, that works uh, and, and meets all those requirements. And then at the same time, once we got that, then we've got to go check and make sure that our, that our product pipe, whatever type of pipe we're using, is, is going to be uh, okay in that particular bore path. Now, one of the big things that drives that is the bend radius. You, you, I'm sure you've heard that a lot. Um, I don't get into bend radius a lot. And, and this uh, uh, seminar right here, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, uh, if, if you, uh, but pretty much the bend radius, uh, is, is how tight we can bend that pipe and, and within a given hole. Now, if I'm dealing with steel product pipe, 
usually the product pipe itself dictates that that bin radius that will allow the, uh, the doing that hole. If I'm do, dealing with a polyethylene pipe, normally it's the drill rod, the steel drill rod, they'll dictate the, the radius in that hole. Now, I will tell you, there are exceptions to that. We have downhole tooling, mud motors, wireline uh, steering uh, tools. Different things can affect that radius. So uh, 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 the, this isn't the only factor that can affect it, but you got to take this into account always. So again, steel pipe, normally the, normally the pipe would drive the radius, plastic pipe, uh, the, 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 the uh, drill rod will, will, will drive that radius. And it's very important if you're a designer and you design your crossing. Because when, when you design that profile, everything that's going to go through that hole has to be able to negotiate that, that, that profile you've got uh, in that hole. And that includes all your, all your radiuses. So, you know, I, I got the, down, the next to the last bullet. You see a, a lot of time out in the field, if you're out there talking with people, if I'm a contractor, I, I'm thinking about my drill rod. And I'm thinking about how tight I can mend that rod or my downhole tooling. And that's kind of what's in, in, in my head. If, if, I, if I'm working for the pipeline owner or the engineer, I'm normally thinking about radius as it applies to my product pipe. I don't want to make sure that drill don't overstress my product pipe. So again, uh, uh, both of them are important, depending on, on regards to how you're looking from it. So depending on the material that you're going to use, both have to be considered during that HD design. Um, now the bore path, again, I feel it's based on definition of the obstacle, the surface conditions, and, and of course the, the product pipe you're going to use. All that will, will, will go into that bore path design and coming up with, with the best design. And uh, so we're going to come up with a radius that's compatible with whatever's down that hole, whether it's the product pipe, the drill rods, or any other downhole tooling. And uh, again, we, we covered the loads and stress analysis for steel pipe in, in a previous webinar. So today we're going to focus on, on the polyethylene, okay? Um, now, there's two basic methods when, when we do a design of crossing. W one method uses what we call a, a specific radius. And if you've ever designed a, 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 a regular crossing with steel or plastic, a lot of time people use that specific radius. If you design a drill with, with the uh, ASTM or some of the methods put out by the Plastic Pipe Institute, a lot of times they'll use the method that uses an average radius. They don't use a specific radius of curvature for those holes. And, and, and the reason they don't is what I told you earlier, bending stress isn't a big concern for the plastic pipe. So they're not that worried about what specific radius is, they'll just use an average. What they're worried about is, is, is that tensile load and that external hoop. So I'm gonna show you that as we go through. So today's webinar is gonna focus on the stress analysis when we're using that polyethylene pipe and using that average radius of curvature this is uh, very common in the plastic pipe methods. <clears throat> now, a couple of things about the performance limits on, on polyethylene pipe that's a little bit different than the steel, okay? Now, if you're not familiar with some of the terms, you hear the term uh, uh, DR a lot. Sometimes you'll see it called SDR. All that stands for is, is diameter to wall thickness ratio, okay? And it's pretty much the diameter divided, divided by, by the wall thickness. Uh, and normally, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, when we do our, our performance limits uh, on our plastic pipe and we come up with our allowable stresses and, and, and what expected stress we have, most of the plastic pipe uh, institutes recommend that normally you do a safety factor of about two is, is what we use. And uh, if, if we don't have a, a high enough safety factor, then we'll go a lot of time to a, to a lower DR or a thicker wall. Because again, the more the more uh, wall we got, the more stress we, we can we can uh, handle. Okay, so again, the safety factor is established based on the pipe you're using, and, and all it is is pretty much a ratio of, of the, the the stress the pipe's going to see and the allowable stress that it can have. And again, you, you can look at with your pipe manufacturer, but the most common number you'll see used is typically two. Now, the other thing about the performance level of, of your polyethylene pipe is uh, we have what we call the hydrostatic buckling or collapse pressure and the ring deformation. You can see from the picture that there on, on the right. Now, the external pressure, the, 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 the drawing on the left, think about earth loads, live loads, things of that nature, and, and it, it can put a point load on a pipe and, and it can actually cause buckling, as you can see in, in that illustration. Uh, 
the um, hold on a second. <clears throat> like you get point load like right here. For some reason my pen's not working on this. I was gonna try to draw something for you here. All right, we'll. we'll uh, I was going to draw something with my pen, but I can't get to, to mark on this right here, so I won't. I, I won't do that today. But, but if you look at that picture on the left, we see buckling again. That's typically an earth load or, or point load that, that can cause the pipe to buckle, or in worst case, it, it, it even even collapse. Okay. The other was is that ring bending or deflection load. That's the one on the right, and 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 th that's more uh, uh, of, of a compressive load, both from uneven earth load around the pipe. Or in, during HDD can be caused by the pullback uh, as well. Okay, so the, the performance limit uh, of our unsupported PE pipe uh, is subject to those compressive thrust and, and that ring, what we call ring bucking or, or collapse mode. The performance limiting of, of the uh, uh, ring bending, the one on the right, again, that that's a result of those non-uniform external earth loads, and again, it can cause that ring deflection. And again, you can also see the one on the right during uh, pullback. Now, normally during pullback, when we go through our curved sections of our hole, that's when we'll get that slight uh, uh, ring deformation you, you'll see on, on that right picture over there. And if you, if you look at it, uh, uh, it's kind of like an egg shape is, is what you'll get. And, and, and really what happens, the, the pipe, you know, uh, will get egg shape and it'll, it'll actually have a small dimension change. Okay, and when it does that, it, it reduces the pipe's uh, collapse resistance, and and, and it, so the, the pipe won't hold as, as much uh, a collapse pressure as it would without that uh, deformation in there. So again, one of the key things that we have to look at for our drills with polyethylene pipe is how much uh, uh, we expect that that pipe to, to deflect based on the pulling loads or, or the or the surface loads we're going to put on it, and and how that's going to affect that pipe while we're pulling it through. Um, so a proper design is going to limit that ring deflection so you don't have any adverse effects. Now, again, you go to your, 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 your plastic pipe uh, uh, catalogs and depending on what kind of pipe you're using, uh, whether the pipe's going to be under pressure or not have any pressure, you'll, you'll see your, your, your uh, uh, deflection limit somewhere between three to seven and a half percent of diameter. And, and anything less than that, you know, satisfactory. If it gets above, above that, then, then again, the pipe can become unstable and want to collapse while you're pulling it through. So one of the things we'll do uh, when we do our analysis, it, again, we'll, we'll actually calculate the percent deflection based on either a, a live load, if it's a live load I'm worried about. If it's surface loads, I'll do it based on that. If I'm worried about the mud slurry weight in the hole, I'll do it based on that load. So whatever load that pipe's going to see, I, I can do the calculation and come up with with what's the uh, what, what percent deflection do I expect? And again, if, if it's less than the than what the manufacturer recommends, I'm okay. If it's more, then again, normally what I have to do is go to a thicker wall to give it a little more strength, or go to a higher grade of polyethylene. There's more than one grade of polyethylene uh, as well. Now, since the earth load is, is, is non-uniform around a pipe when we're pulling it through a hole, uh, a, a lot of time we, again, we'll get that ring deflection, pr pretty much a decrease in the vertical and, and an increase in the horizontal, again, the egg shape that I, I was telling you about uh, earlier. So one of the key things the designer is to make sure that pipe's gonna be stiff enough, we call it stiff enough, to limit that deflection and give you that safety factor against buckling during pullback, especially if you're worried about it. Now, I will tell you, with, with, with plastic pipe, when you're designing a drill for plastic pipe, you have to look at how's that pipe going to behave during the pullback. And you have to look at the safety factor against buckling during pullback. And, and of course, then you have to also look at it during the life of the pipe, especially if you're going under roads, railroads, you know, anything that puts a lot of load on that pipe and make sure that you know, it's going to be satisfactory for the live loads or uh, uh, whatever loads that pipe might see, okay? Now, pulling force. When, when we talk about how much pulling load do I have to put on that pipe to pull it through that hole? Now, remember I told you about the drags earlier. So the pulling force is going to overcome that, 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 that uh, uh, drag, that frictional drag, that fluid drag, all that drag I showed you about earlier. 
It's also got to overcome what we call the capsin effect. That's going through those bends so I mentioned earlier. That, that's, that's pulling the pipe through those curves that you made there. And it's also got to overcome the hydrokinetic drag. That's when you pick up that pipe and, and the pipe's closed on the end. We, we always put a, a, a fusion a, a cap over the pipe. And when we pull the pipe into the hole, you know, we're actually pulling, push, pulling it against that mud that's in the hole. That's called the hydrokinetic drag. So the pulling force has to overcome each one of those components. And again, it, it, it will apply that to the, the, the pipe. And again, we make sure that's not going to overstress uh, our pipe. Now, that, that tensile stress, that axial tensile stress grows over the length of that pull. So, so as you get, when you first start, you know, of course, you've got a lot lower uh, a, a pull load. As you pull the pipe down the hole, at each section, you're going to it's added. You get more and more pull load to it. And of course, the highest is going to be when you're pulling the pipe out uh, at the other end. Now, the duration of the pull load is going to be the longest that the pull nose is going to see it the most. And of course, the tail end of the pipe is going to have zero tensile stress for zero time at, at the very, very end. Now, another big thing, the performance limit on our plastic pipe is it stretches, not like steel. <laughs> so based on the time that your pipe is going to be under that load, based on how much that load is, it's going to dictate how much stretch that you're going to get in, in, in that pipe. But, but you are going to have a, 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 what we call a recoverable elastic strain or, or viscoelastic stretch when you pull in plastic pipe. Uh, and again, you have to account for that uh, when, when you pull the pipe out of the hole and, and, and you quit pulling. Now, that, that, that stress goes away immediately, but it takes a while for that strain to recover. And, and, and if you ever uh, 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 bound a drill with a plastic pipe and you pull it out, you see, See, we'll pull out a certain length of pipe. We pull that out so as that pipe recovers, we don't lose the pipe down the hole. Uh, then many people put, did a drill and come back the next day to do the tie-ins and, and didn't see the pipe because it's gone back down the hole. So, uh, uh, but we have to make sure we account for that in, in our uh, polyethylene drills. So we got to pick a, a, a DR so the tensile stress is, is not going to uh, is going to be strong enough that during the pullback. So we don't exceed whatever the, the, the permitted uh, tensile stress is, is for, for the pipe material. And again, we, we can increase the pipe wall. That'll, that'll allow for, for a greater pull force. And the, the, even though the thicker wall gives us more weight, because that pipe's in that mud, it's pretty buoyant. And, and, and so it, it doesn't really affect the pull loads that much. So very common uh, 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 mitigation method when you have problems with, with high tensile loads on plastic pipe is to go to a, thick, a thicker wall. Now, this right here is, is, is y'all seen this typical diagram of, of, uh, of a drill. Now, now, what I want to show you here is ju just the, the difference. Now, you, you see right here, uh, this right here is what we call a point of curvature. And this right here is the point of tangent. So this right here is, is, a, is a, a specific radius, right? This radius right here is a 1,200 foot radius of 293 feet. And, and, and most, all of our steels are designed with, with a specific radius like that. And a lot of our plastics are designed the same way. We, we call that using a specific radius of curvature. Now, because of, of the different nature of the materials, the, the Plastic Pipe uh, uh, Institute and, and ASTM, they use what they call an average radius of curvature. So if you look right here, they actually go from at the surface, that straight section all the way through that arc, and, and they just take an average radius of curvature over that uh, uh, this distance right here. So in, instead of taking a specific radius, like you do right here, they take an average, okay? Now again, they do that because they're not worried about the bending stresses, they're worried more uh, 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 about tensile. And, and so their whole section, is, uh, their design, is, again, is based, up, based on negotiating these obstacles, but uh, when they do their stress calcs, that they just uh, uh, do that average radius of curvature uh, uh, to do those with. Just how they do it, uh, uh, I don't show you a lot of calculations today, we don't have much time, but just to give you an idea, this is how you calculate the average radius of curvature. Uh, all, all it is is two times the, the height you're going down divided by the square of the angle. So right here, what, whatever that height you're going down, whatever that angle, again, two times the, the height divided by the square of the angle will give you that average radius. If you ever want to know what the specific radius is, all you got to do is, is take your actual uh, uh, pipe length you're looking at and the change in angle over that length, 
and, and that'll give you the specific radius o o over that, that distance. The length, the corresponding horizontal distance to get that depth is two times the height divided by the angle. That, that'll give you the length. And uh, again, uh, the plastic pipe method uses the, the, uh, that, that bore path uh, based on these calculations here to come up with, with the stresses and, and, and what the stress pipe is going to see during that installation. So the length is that two times H, that, that's the length to get to this depth right here. Now, again, that's the horizontal length, not, not the length of the pipe. That's the horizontal length to get to that depth, right? Now, the pipe resist, I mentioned to you earlier, we got the frictional force between the pipe and, and, and the soil or, or the pipe and the borehole. We got the frictional, the frictional drag between the pipe and the drilling mud. We got those caps and effects around the bends. And of course, we got that weight of that pipe all goes into those pull loads. Now here's, here's how they're calculated, very, very, very straightforward. Uh, this is your coefficient of friction. And, and again, if you're in the hole, it's typically 0.3 in that range, uh, uh, anywhere from 0.0.25 to 0.4. So 0.3 is a good average number. Uh, between the pipe and the ground is usually 0.5 and usually 0.1 if the pipe's on rollers above ground, okay? So that, that's your friction, your coefficient of friction right here. This right here is, is the way of the pipe, by the way. And this right here is the length of that straight section. And, and that'll give you the pulling force in pounds for whatever section that is. If you have a curved section, same thing. But this right here is the natural log. There's that coefficient of friction. Now, right here, pretty much any time we bend it, we're in the hole. So pretty much we're using the coefficient of friction between the pipe and the drilling mud all the time for this one right here because uh, then we have the change of the angle of that bend and again here's the coefficient of friction again times the weight of the pipe and the length so this right here will, will, will give us this, the curve section so you can take this right here for your straight sections you do this calculation here for your curve and and you can uh, add them and, and come up with the pull loads for each section uh, for a drill as you go through now these right here, I, I cut out for you so you can see the actual calculations based on the Plastic Pipe Institute or the ASTM method. And, and pretty much what they do is, is they estimate the pull loads at points, you know, in, in this case, four points, point one, two, three, and four. Now those four points are these points right here. If you look right here, point one is the above ground part, point two, is that straight section and that first curve? Point three is whatever straight, the straight section you got between uh, 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 the curve sections. Point four is that last curve section coming up. So those are typically the four sections they'll have for, for polyethylene pipe. And this right here calculates the pull loads. And that's, this is pull loads in pounds for each of those sections. Now, a couple of things to look at, the, the, these are all additive. T1 is the above ground part of pipe. That's why you have all the pipe. And, and your coefficient of friction is for the, the pipe above ground, that soil. And that gives you the tension for all that above ground part. Now, T2 is at the end of that straight section and that curve. And of course, so that's going to take you in. in the, you notice right here, they add T1. All this is always additive. So you, you can add as many sections as you need to because they, they always just add those sections together. You see T1's added in right here. T2's added in here. You know, T3, so, so th th they just sum up. So uh, th th this is the pull load through each section, but this right here is the total pull load, the way they got it calculated. So the, the total pull load at point four will be this calculation right here, okay? Uh, right here's the variables for those calculations. You can have that when you download, to look at each of those and see what the variables are. Now, a couple other quick calculations that come into play uh, uh, on this is, is pipe weight. Now, again, you can get the dry pipe weight from, from a catalog. You can pull it out. Uh, you can also calculate it by this calculation right here. Uh, you use the, the density of water and, and, and the specific gravity of the pipe material. Normally, it's 0.9 for polyethylene, and you can actually calculate the dry pipe weight. Uh, now, when you, when you buy plastic pipe, the, the wall thickness of plastic pipe isn't like steel. It's not guaranteed that you're getting a certain wall. What they guarantee is you won't get anything less than the wall thickness you order. In other places, it'll be thicker. So, again, the Plastic Pipe Institute's recommend that you increase that weight by a, a 1.06 to get an accurate a, a dry pipe weight. 
that buoyant weight I showed you we're using the calculation. This is how you get the buoyant weight. This is for an empty pipe that doesn't have any water in it. And uh, uh, pretty, uh, this right here, down here is for a pipe filled with water. So you can, you take the average pipe weight, you add the water weight minus your displaced mud weight. And, and, and that, that, that'll give you the, the, the effective weight of that pipe in the mud. And, and right here's how you calculate your displaced mud weight, okay? So all, all that comes in your bullets to control your pipe. Uh, uh, bullets to control is a lot more critical with plastic pipe than it is steel. A lot of times we don't use bullets to control with steel, we use it very, very often with plastic pipe, especially as we start getting in any any size whatsoever. Okay. Now, one more thing that uh, a little bit unique about a, a plastic you you'll never see with steel is that hydrokinetic force I mentioned to you. Now, if you look right here in the calculation, this right here is called the hydrokinetic force. You don't, you don't have to add it one time again because all these are additive. So normally we'll add it at T two. You don't, you don't add the above ground part because it's not in the hole yet. So you add the T2 when the pipe's going down the hole. And uh, what this takes into account, remember I mentioned earlier, when, when you take a, a, a plastic pipe and, and, and we fuse on the, the end cap, we pick it up and we pull it down that hole against that mud, that, that mud puts a force against it. And, and again, that's called the hydrokinetic force in pounds. Very hard to estimate. So uh, again, typically the hydrokinetic pressure is about five to 10 PSI is what the, the, they recommend using. So you take this calculation down here and, and you use that hydro pressure of, of five to 10 PSI and use the calculation right here. This is the diameter of, of the ringed hole and the outside diameter of the pipe. And, and that'll, that'll give you that uh, uh, hydrokinetic force in pounds that you add back there at, at T2. The bigger the pipe, the more important that is. Okay, so, so again, uh, as tensile that you have to worry about with, with the polyethylene. So you do that calculation I showed you earlier. Again, so right here, right here would be T1, right here would be T2, right here would be T3, and right here would be T4. That, that, that would be your pull loads. Now, if you want to know your stress at any of those points, all you do is take the, 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 the calculation I showed you earlier, the tensile load, and, and you do this calculation right here. And, and by the right, way, this is your bending uh, uh, stress right here. And, and, and that'll give you the actual, uh, uh, what we call the, the, the outer fiber stress at that point. Now, the high stress is going to be at point four because that's going to be your highest tensile load. So if you're doing this by hand, a lot of people will just do it for this point here. But, of course, with computers, we, we do it for the whole, the whole drill. Okay? So, so we'll, 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 we'll plug in T1, T2, T3, T4 right here and, and do our, our average uh, uh, actual tensile stress at each point. And again, we'll check that stress against the allowable stress based on the kind of pipe we're using and, and make sure that we're okay. Now, another thing, be careful with with plastic pipe is the term safe pull strength. Uh, uh, your plastic pipe company will, will, will tell you what the safe pull strength is. Uh, there's an ASTM method of calculating your safe pull strength. But, but remember, when you pull that pipe through that bent hole, that reduces your safe pull strength but because you've got that stress in there, like you saw right here. Remember I told you this is the bending stress right here? So, so, so you, you gotta be careful with that. And you see in this table right here, if I bend that pipe with a raised curvature of 50 feet, my bending stress is 308, my safe pull stress is 892, my safe pull force is 10,000. If, if I make that an 800 foot radius, look how much my, my safe pull force goes up and my safe pull stress goes up. So Hector, when you design that bore pad, those tight radiuses, even though we can bend plastic pipe a lot tighter, that does have an impact on your crossing and that's gonna lower, the, the tighter you make those bends, the less your safe pull force is gonna be. So again, just keep in mind when you're doing your bore path design that all that uh, has, has an impact. This is how we calculate our, our safe pull stress. This is in PSI. Again, this allowable stress will come from your manufacturer based on the grade of plastic that you're using. This right here is your bending stress. Again, it has to come out of that, and that'll give you your safe pull stress. If you want, if you want to know your safe pull force in pounds, that's this calculation right here. You take your safe pull stress right here, run these numbers right here, and, and that'll give you your safe pull force in pounds. So if, if I do the calculation I showed you before, I come up at T4 with a pull load of 20,000 pounds. Then I run this calculation right here. 
uh, and I'll come up with my pull, my, my allowable pull force. And again, I got to make sure that, that my my pull loads are, are, are less than my allowable pull loads. Okay. Now, remember the ASTM, the, 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 that, that is an ASTM standard for, for coming up with your allowable tensile load. That does not take into account your bends. So make sure that's what we're doing right here. You've got to take out your bending stress to make before you calculate this pull force right here. If you don't, you can you can wind get yourself in some trouble. Now I mentioned earlier about the stretch and about it being longer. This last bullet right here is a key. Uh, again, this is from the Plastic Pipe Institute that they recommend about four percent extra length of pipe to be pulled out to take care of, of that st stretch. So when that pipe it goes back to its normal size, you don't lose the pipe down the hole. Uh, 40 feet per 1,000 is, is, is what you want to do. So if you're involved in a plastic pipe drill, make sure when they pull out, they pull out the extra lengths and have it on both ends. And, and, and again, when you pull in plastic pipe, you never want to tie your plastic pipe back in that day. Always let it sit for a few hours, several hours. You, a lot of time we'll wait for the next morning and, and do our tie-ins then, okay? Now, I close it up with just a couple of things. There's a lot that goes into this. Uh, uh, the power tool that we're going to talk about and Paul's going to talk about with you uh, 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 does models this. It models it based on the Plastic Institute and the ASTM uh, uh, methods. And I just put these screens here right out of the power tool, uh, just so you can see. You know, one of the first things you do is what we call your input parameters. And again, you can, you can pick a high density or a me medium density pipe. And then you'll have an actual table. You see the arrows here? You, you can pick different uh, 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 modules based on time, uh, uh, based on duration of time, and, and it'll, it'll populate the field. So uh, it'll, all that's already built into the program for you. Uh, this right here is just a, a catalog from, from a, a, a Plastic Pipe Institute. And, and all this is built into the program, but you see all the different modules right here. Now, if you're dealing with steel, X52 is X52, you know, X60 is X60. When you're doing a plastic, depending on how long that pipe's going to see that load, and depending on what grade of pipe you're using, you see all the different ranges that you can use of modulus in here. So, again, they're built into the program, but you have to make sure you pick the right one for what you're trying to analyze at that particular time. Then you have your pipe properties. Again, again most of these, will, will, if you go in and put in their pipe diameter and the wall thickness, it, it'll give you the DR, uh, uh, things of that nature. And, and again, you pick your different modulus. Safety factor, again, I told you earlier, 1.2 is a very common industry standard. Now, the module, the program also does buoyancy control. It, see where it says pipe filled with water? If you say no, it, it, okay, no water. If you say yes, it's going to ask you how much water, what percent of water is going to be in that pipe, and it'll do all the buoyancy control calculations for you. And then it'll, it'll, it'll build your bore path, uh, bore path profile based on your depths and your angles. Uh, it calculates all that. Uh, and you input your water and mud properties. Water is used 62.4. Your mud's going to be somewhere around 1.1, 1.4 in that range. Here's your coefficient of friction that I mentioned to you earlier. There's that hydrokinetic pressure. So you input that data right there. And once you input all this data, then the model, uh, the program is going to run the calculations. There's all your results. Your average raised curvature, your lengths, your bending strain, your bending stress the way the empty pipe, the, the, the buoyant way of the pipe. And there's that T1 through 4 I told you about right here. That, that's the pull loads through all those sections. And then it's going to check your allowable stresses based on these pull loads. It'll tell you whether you pass or fail. And then it'll calculate your breakaway lengths, uh, 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 you, that overly compensation factor. Uh, 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 and big thing is this right here, your safety factor against collapse. Remember I told you most of the time we try to have at least two or better. In this case here, it was almost four. So again, it, it, the toolbox is running through each of those. Now, if you don't understand some of these terms or, or how we do some of those, I recommend you take uh, uh, one of our, our, our day and a half or two day training seminars. We cover all this in detail and what they mean, uh, but uh, it, 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 it gives you a better understanding of, of what they are. But the, 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 the power tool is an is extremely uh, a powerful module to help you calculate this and, and analyze uh, how your bore path design is going to affect the stresses on your polyethylene product body. Uh, Paul, you want to uh, talk more about the uh, power tool? 
Yes, can everyone hear me? Um, so maybe just a quick housekeeping. Uh, we are f uh, 16 minutes to go to the end. And uh, now would be a good time for everyone who is on the call to uh, go into your chat box and start uh, typing in questions that you'd like to ask David uh, relative to his portion of the presentation. I will go through just some remaining slides here, um, kind of about the power tool overview of the hub and some of the uh, training uh, updating, up, upcoming training dates. So basically with the HDD power tool, um, it's a separate uh, application, uh, different than the HDD light that is in the pipeline toolbox. It basically allows for more functionality uh, where you can uh, do compound bends, unlimited sections, fracture analysis, cables and conduits, and much more. It allows you to reduce project costs, complexity, and risk uh, construction risk. There's going to be an overview webinar of the Power Tool a week from today at the same time for the, everyone that's registered for today's webinar. So we will um, send out an invite to everyone who's on this list. And uh, if you choose to attend, you're more than welcome. And it'll give you a high level overview of that tool. Next slide, please. This info infographic has a lot of uh, things going on it, but it, it in effect identifies different sources of applications and data that are available on the Pipeline Hub platform along with their origin. On the graphic, the dark blue is intellectual property uh, that's been developed within technical toolboxes. The other colors indicate either data or applications integrated from external sources, and the gray shows public data and plugins. The hub draws on this eclectic mix together in one integrated data environment using the pipeline open data source or pods, including uh, the HDD power tool. Notice that the pipeline hub bar at the bottom um, spans across all of the data application. And that's to indicate that once data is loaded into the integrated environment, it's easily accessible and shared for use in any of the applications on the platform. Next slide, please. So we technical toolboxes provides the calculational tools to perform engineering assessments. Some of our products include pipeline toolbox, AC mitigation power tool, HDD power tool, as we've discussed today, PRCI products such as hot tap thermal analysis and on bottom stability, as well as many more. Our power tools provide expanded capabilities to the calculational tools by either automating portions or aggregating a matrix of combinational calculations, thereby enhancing user productivity. Technical Toolbox provides a suite of in-depth subject matter expert training to support your individual training needs. And next slide, please. On the professional development side, uh, we offer obviously five, several uh, training type events, whether they're live or via webinar. So we've successfully uh, transitioned into the online webinar due to the pandemic. However, we are, as you saw in the first um, uh, poll, we are considering bringing back the on-site training. So we appreciate everyone's feedback for uh, giving us kind of an idea as far as where everybody's sitting there. The webinars range from hour to multi-day events, and as noted in the schedule, we are transitioning back to destination in person, um, as we believe that uh, professionals receive the best training experience due to the limited class size and the superior engagement with the SMA's instructors. So with that, we will go on to the final poll in today's um, webinar, and then we will open it up for Q&A. Uh, sorry, I guess we are having technical difficulties with the Q&A. So the next slide, um, if you can uh, go to the next slide, Norlin. Um, so maybe what's the most meaningful next next steps for you. Um, we're going to do the Q&A now. We will address the questions and comments from the chat. You could request a demo to see the software in, in action. Um, you can register for professional development webinar or contact us directly. We'd love to hear feedback and answer any questions. And now I'm going to turn the floor over to Joseph Ladner, 
who is our engineering performance advisor, and he will lead the Q&A session. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, pleasure to have you all on virtually. Again, this is Joseph. My name is Joseph Ladner, engineering performance advisor at Technical Toolboxes. Some of you know me, some of you may not. Uh, but what we're going to do is spend the next 10 minutes. Uh, maybe we can even extend it another five minutes. Uh, there are a lot of questions rolling in. I'm going to uh, just be transparent with everyone. We're not going to be able to get to you all, especially with the volume of questions coming in, which we do appreciate. Um, but uh, we're just, I'm just going to go in the order that they came in and from ones that go unanswered, um, we'll have Mr. Willoughby answer those at, a, at another time and we'll reach back out to you individually. Now, let me kind of lump in some questions together. We are getting some questions in regards to the HGD power tool. Um, kind of a general, uh, if you have asked a question in regards to the software, the HGD power tool, I highly encourage you attend the next webinar for this two-part series that's going to be next Tuesday. Uh, myself will be there, our other SME, Joe Pikus, will be there, Paul, etc. And we're really going to spend that hour time focusing on the HGD power tool. Um, uh, any questions that go unanswered here in regards to the software, we will make sure to address it there. Um, and, and we're going to go through that in much more detail, and it's going to be strictly related to the software. So. In, lieu, in light of the time limits that we have here, and I want to make sure a lot of the technical questions get answered because that's where we have Mr. Willoughby for, that's where I'm going to be focusing my time on. So for everyone that registered to this webinar and attended today, we're going to be shooting out an email tomorrow morning to sign up for the webinar that will be same time next Tuesday, um, June 15th, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern uh, for the HGD Power Tools software-focused webinar. Well, we'll be covering a lot there in regards to both steel, plastic pipe, hydraulic fracture analysis, um, and, and really the design validation portion of the HD power tool. Um, also, uh, there is also a few questions that I can lump together in regards to training. As Paul mentioned, um, you know, we have a full training uh, uh, program here uh, led by our director in that area, Sean. Sean does an incredible job getting that together, both in-person training and webinars. Just go to our website. We have a lot of trainings kind of there, even outside of horizontal directional drilling. But in regards to HDD, we have um, technical focus trainings with eight, with uh, Mr. David Willoughby, but we also have sulfur focus trainings. Um, look, the one next Tuesday is only an hour, so we could spend half a day on the HCD power tool, and that's more so what uh, Mr. Willoughby would cover in his in his sulfur focus training on June 29th. Um, if any of you are interested, but the one next uh, uh, Tuesday will be um, just a, a, an overview of the program in general. We'll make sure to try to answer all the questions, especially the ones that were outstanding today. Um, so now I'm going to go to the technical questions. And again, we won't be able to get to all of them, but we'll try our best to get to the most as possible. And we'll try to go a little bit over the, the hour marker here. So the first question I have for you, Mr. Willoughby, is in regards to buoyancy. So is buoyancy control typically used for polyethylene HGD crossings? Uh, yes, for typically anything with polyethylene bigger than 10 inches in diameter, we will typically have to use buoyancy control. Uh, if you don't, the pipe's gonna float uh, up on the top of the hole uh, uh, with you. Uh, if you look at that picture, actually it's a good picture we got up right there for this question. You see all those those, those cuts on the top of that pipe, That's was that, that, that was a 36 inch uh, polyethylene pipe, but it, it flowed up on the top of the hole and it was a rock a crossing and you see how bad it, it scoured the top of the pipe. So. Uh, Normally, if, if, if anything 10 inches and above, we'll pretty much require a contractor to use buoyancy control. Now, again, if you don't understand buoyancy control, I recommend you come to one of the training programs. But basically what it is, we put water in the pipe a certain amount, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the water is to help weigh the pipe down within that drilling mud. And, and, and the, drill, the drilling mud, that displaced mud weight calculation I showed you earlier, that tells you how much that, that, that mud is actually picking that pipe up. So even though your pipe might weigh, you know, 12 pounds a foot, when, when you put it in that mud, it's going to float up and it's going to, uh, with plastic pipe, it's going to be a negative. And it's actually going to float up in that hole. So 10 inches and bigger, we all, pretty much always, and the bigger it gets, the more imperative it gets that you use uh, uh, buoyancy control, put water or something, some ballast in that pipe to, to weight it down. Perfect. Thank you, David. Um, hopefully that addressed the questions there. Um, next question for you, sir. 
is the radius of curvature angle typically measured in radians or degrees in, in your professional experience? Well, it's the same thing, but in, in the field, it's, it's always measured in degrees. Uh, 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 well, I should say, I've never seen it out in the field measured in anything but degrees. Now, back in the office, in, in the engineers, sometimes they'll use ra radians, sometimes degrees. Be careful, though. For, let me take, for example, you, you know you can multiply the, the, the length of the arc times the, 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 the change in angle. Uh, uh, I'm excuse me, you can multiply the radius of, of the arc times the change in angle to get the length of the arc, right? That only works if you multiply it times the, the angle in radius, not degrees. So, so just be careful and think if the, if the math's asking, asking for radians, you make sure you, you do that. But for, as far as your drawings, whether if you say you're going in the ground at 12 you know, degrees, then pretty much we'll always report that as 12 degrees. And we'll report that, that change of, of, uh, of the bend. If, if I'm doing a, a coming back to horizontal, then we'll call that a 12 degree bend. Again, so normally you'll always see it reported in degrees out in the field. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, David. Hopefully that uh, addressed that question. Um, next question, David. Um, if you have plastic pipe and a steel pipe casing, are they pulled at the same time? Not normally. Uh, uh, no, no, we don't. I'll be upfront. We do not do that very much anymore. Uh, uh, years ago, we used to be more apt to put a steel casing. Uh, you know, and, and that was using the casing for support. A, a big place was railroad crossings. You, you know, used to railroad crossings, we'd put a, a steel casing pipe in. But normally what we'll do is, is we'll pull the steel casing in and then we'll pull the, the plastic pipe through the steel. Uh, you don't want to pull them together because, because you, 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 can, uh, you, know, you can put more tensile load because that still adds a lot of weight. And you can put more tensile load uh, than that plastic pipe will, will be able to handle. So if you are going to use a steel casing, pull the steel casing in first, then pull the plastic pipe inside that steel casing. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Um, is it possible to use a tighter radius of curvature in compliance with equipment rod specifications, of course, on the HGD side than the steel pipe properties allow for if we intend on dislocating the pipe head before the bend occurs? Uh, I'm trying to make sure I understand the question. Re re read that question yeah, one more time. Yeah, no worries. Is it possible to use a tighter radius of curvature on the HDD side than the steel pipe properties allow for if we intend to, if we intend on dislocating the pull head before the bend occurs? Uh, no. Uh, you got to remember, regardless of where it happens, when we do a drill, the first thing we drill is the pilot hole. And the, and the pilot hole is where we do all of our steering, and the pilot hole is what dictates the, the radiuses, the angles, you, you, all that takes place during the pilot. During the ream and pullback, when, when you're pulling your pipe back through, you're just following that hole that's already there. We don't, we don't change the angles or radius or anything during, during the ream or pullback. So uh, you've got to make sure during the pilot hole, you can't have any radius that, that, that drill that's tighter than that drill rod, for example, will be able to handle. Because you, you know you, you overstress the drill rod. Now, if if you're talking about when you when you're doing the pullback and you hook the pipe up and, and you're pulling the pipe back through the hole, well that pipe's got to go through those radiuses. So uh, even if you're going to disconnect the pulling head somewhere up the range, range. So uh, the bottom line is I, I wouldn't have any radius in that hole that it, that that my downhole tools, my downhole equipment, or my product pipe could not go through that radius without overstressing. Uh, the material okay gotcha thank you and remember um, when, yep. when you get tight bends you pay a price for that remember that calculation where, where and i don't care if you're using steel or plastic whatever you're using the tighter that bend the higher your stresses the higher your loads and you're going to lower your allowable loads so just keep that in mind you always pay a price for those real tight aggressive bends and, and the first thing about a tight bend is you better make sure that you're in a soil condition that a contractor can do that type of event. It's not that easy to do sometimes. Okay, thank you, David. Um, 
I, I, we have plenty of questions where we could probably spend another 20, 30 minutes on this, but uh, I got another two questions for you that maybe we can round out on. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. Um, the first one I have for you, David, is there a rule of thumb that we need to use buoyancy control on based on crossings distance? No, uh, buoyancy control is always based off diameter and mud weight. It has nothing to do with the length of the drill. Uh, in fact, when we, uh, uh, again, if, if I show you an actual buoyancy mud analysis, we do a calculation, we do, we do it on a foot of pipe. You know, it, it, it don't matter, the length of the drill has no impact. So it's strictly a diameter. And, and the two big things that impact it, or I should say the three big things, is the diameter of the pipe, the dry weight of the pipe, and, and the weight of your drilling mud. The, those are the big things that's gonna affect your buoyancy and control. Okay. Thank you. And we'll go with one last uh, question before we round this out. Um, what is the typical rule of thumb for radius of curvature for high density polyethylene pipe? If there is one. There's not one. I mean, I think if you go to Plastic Pipe Institute, they'll give you something like 40D. Uh, again, it, it, it'll vary depending on what grade of polyethylene you're losing, using. But for, for, for the regular yellow pipe, I believe it's 40 times the diameter. You know, and that they'll give you the, the allowable bend radius. Uh, but again, what's going to drive that is is the drill rod, not not the product pipe. So normally, what we'll do when we when we're doing a plastic drill, uh, once we we kind of get an idea of, of of what class of rig a contractor would use for that drill, and, and we do that by when we again when we come up with our pull loads, uh, uh, we you know, get an idea. And again, if you're not familiar with this stuff, again, I recommend you come into some of the training because we cover this in detail on rig selection and how to get an idea of what class rig. But but once you get an idea of what class rig, then we know uh, typically what size drill rod the contractor is going to use, and we'll use that uh, that for our our uh, uh, radius. Now, the rule of thumb for plastic pipe that we use really is, is we use a hundred times the diameter of the drill pipe. So if the contractor is using a four inch drill pipe, we would multiply that times a hundred. And, and so we, we would use a 400 foot radius. If he was using a three inch drill pipe, we'd use a 300 foot radius. So, so that, that, that's the typical rule right there. But we, we do it times the drill pipe, never times the product pipe. Gotcha, thank you, David. Well, uh, there are uh, about a dozen other questions left. Uh, unfortunately, we're just out of time here. We will have the questions noted and I will be getting them to Mr. Willoughby to get back with you all, or I will be getting back with you with the answer. Um, we appreciate all you coming today. Well, I highly, highly encourage um, anyone that either had questions, wants to see the power tool in more detail, um, wants to learn more about horizontal directional drilling. I mean, anything, highly encourage you come to the, uh, uh, the next virtual training to this webinar series on next Tuesday. Um, um, get, please get myself or Sean for our detailed technical trainings that we have coming up for HGD or outside of it. Um, but be looking out for your email again next uh, Tuesday, uh, June 15th. Uh, we'll be going over the HGD power tool, uh, how it compares to the competitors out there, um, in house solutions, what the capabilities are, et cetera. I saw a lot of questions pertaining to that. So we appreciate everyone, really do appreciate your time. We'll have upcother, uh, upcoming webinars coming up um, um, here in the near future over other topics. So we appreciate all your time today and look forward to uh, hearing from you and talking to you in the near future. Thank you. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.